about the current show that's up, the street signs that he's been collecting for the past decade, and also what's coming up next in August. So please join us. This is where we hide away, our special hiding place. Okay, so we're here with Douglas and tell us how you started collecting all these signs, why and when. And um, always been an ad ad admirer of art, uh, mm -hmm. collector of art, and driving up and down, I mean these things are all over the place, anybody that isn't blind will have noticed some of them. It's amazing how used to them we get, I mean it's amazing really how much they blend into our atmosphere, but I noticed them and I recognize a particular charm. I couldn't really resist and after a matter of time, about 10 years ago I started tearing them down off of these JPS poles which we've recreated here behind us. Wow. And I have I think a few hundred now. A few hundred? I think it's about a few hundred in total and uh, hopefully we'll take a look inside and you'll see the best. But most of the hand done ones and most of the unusual ones or outrageous ones are there. <laughs> you know you have to. A couple outrageous ones and they're among the best. And Grosvenor Galleries is the only place where we can come and see these signs, right? Ah, uh, You don't have don't them up anywhere, anywhere else, else? Unless you cover a lot of miles on the road looking at a lot of light posts and you're only gonna see... In their original exhibition spaces. Yeah. <laughs> but they, I mean, when you see, you know, a couple dozen together on a wall, it's quite um, intense. You yeah. know, the the the, the, the colors is, and is um, it's much more dramatic. It's much more desirable. It's much more artistic. Cool. So we're gonna go inside and take a look. Good, Good stuff. Thanks. One could say Douglas Reed is an aficionado of not only Jamaican art, but also of street and roots culture. As a gallery owner and collector for over 20 years, his passion is not only evident in the creative fields, but also very much where Jamaican culture is concerned. If you come here and have a chat with him about Jamaican art, and particularly about these street dance signs, his fervent love and appeals for not only their artistic merit, but their anthropological significance will infect you also. Dealing with visual art for as long as I have, I immediately saw the value of them. Visually, historically, you know, documentary, all of them. Yeah, very culturally all important. All of them. You can barely pick up two with the same hand. So it's like maybe the 60 odd pieces are by 50 odd different people. So it's it's not limited, it's not one person's. But they showcase the natural ability for graphic art in Jamaica. Absolutely. Because, I mean, they're all perfectly balanced. Yeah. The lettering is very creative. Not, none of them look overly crowded. But you see the but stencil the coloring is the letters. Same. Yeah. Because he actually cuts a stencil. You know, oh, he is, cuts them himself? He actually cuts a stencil out of nothing. I love this. This is hand painted. That's different. That's one. not a stencil. This is also hand painted. And there are three or four by that artist. Um, this being another one, if you follow me, this is also by that artist. Now, you've collected these all over Jamaica, right? Um, mostly Kingston, but... Mostly Kingston? Mostly Kingston, because okay. I'm mostly in Kingston. Right. So okay. it's interesting, there are differences. And the ones that I know and, I, and can remember getting from out of town do have a different look. It's distinguished as like somebody's handwriting. All of them have an address. This one actually <coughs> is, obvious, is, is also one of my favorites. And there are two others like it. And White Horses is by St. Thomas. There are signs with Mavada. Mavada came from just behind us here on... 
you know, in this particular area, but yeah. I can solve a piece. So, right. it, so there's a lot to do with the whole geographical. It may tell you which artist is involved. So the cultural significance of it is, it's, all of these are sort of records of what our music artists have been doing in Kingston sure. or elsewhere, sure. and when. They don't stay up very long, do they? They do not stay up very long. Because they, they, if you don't collect them, or if someone isn't collecting them, the artists themselves will go and collect them and take them down in order to put up the next perhaps, poster? Perhaps, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I think some of them have been painted over time and again. Mm -hmm. So maybe the board itself, I think... Might people, have layers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because some have the paper posters stuck on top, which is great. Wow. I've so never noticed that sign. before. This is uh, this behind here says "Good over Evil," which was a popular sound, I guess. For the few that have paper, I've left them alone, even if they're hanging off. Which I think is good because yeah. that also shows you the life of some of these signs as well. It's just texture. It's just a tapestry. It's just richer, mm -hmm. but certainly it tells you about the musical the culture. The culture, yeah. certainly. But it also tells you artistically how we communicate because these are signs, mm -hmm. and this. This is, a, this is like a Marlboro sign advertising cigarettes, but it's a sign advertising a dance. Is this a permanent um, exhibition or? It can't be permanent, but they're certainly up for another few weeks. And I think they'll make it up again. And perhaps next time it'll be a different 60. Would you ever consider showing them elsewhere? I would love the opportunity. Are we, are we going to take this to New York? Uh, yes. Let's that's, take this that's, to that's, New York. That's your job. <laughs> Too much of what we have here that are our strengths and our gifts and our, we just take for granted and, and too many people don't benefit from them so so um, that's why we want to get people to come in and look at it more because this is bringing our attention to something right. that we're probably blinded well, to on a daily basis. Well that's what galleries do. Yeah that's, that's what, what galleries, galleries do. do. It's funny I mean the next show I will tell you a bit about because it is particularly interesting and there is a convenient tie-in and crossover mm -hmm. because this sign um, Presidential Click was one of the companies that uh, Dudus had something to do with, the notorious Dudus. Right. Who, I don't want to be misunderstood, I mean, I, you know, I think Dudus was as much a victim and, a, you know, of the whole system as, as anything else, but certainly he has come to international... Robin know, Hood acclaim. <laughs> you know what I mean? Notoriety, whatever. Yeah. But this is a sign that was obviously, it came from the whole Tivoli area, that whole West Kingston area. Mm -hmm. um, but there was an artist who came to Jamaica in late May, mm -hmm. I think the 20th, and I think on the 23rd was the start of this, the whole insanity, the state of emergency, yes. the siege that dozens of people killed. I mean, mm -hmm. it was tragic. But um, no, I've yet to see anybody else locally do any documenting of this. They, this artist visiting from Belize has taken on that mandate and he has a body of work and that will be the next show here. So as a little teaser, as a little introduction mm -hmm. and as a little tie-in from this one, the show. The artist is Hubert Neal. It's called the Dudas Chronicles. Or, or, wow, it is yeah. so specifically about oh, It's very, very specific. And it, it's and it starts specific. on where? 21st of August, which is a Saturday. Mm -hmm. There'll be a little opening reception here mm -hmm. at Rovno. There's no entrance, no cover charge from this straight into that. So it will be interesting, it'll be a nice transition and it'll be a good show and all are welcome. So come and take a look. Thanks Douglas. Okay. <laughs>